Hey everybody, I'm just waiting for some folks to get in here. We need to have a conversation. I hate, every time I have these conversations, like the stupid people that be in my chat, y'all don't ever be around. I, I, okay, so I'm going to say this too. If you one of the stupid motherfuckers I'm finna talk about, feel more than free to bring your ass on this live. Let's have a conversation. If that is not you, please do not request to come on this live, okay? Because that's, I don't want to talk about nothing else but these things I'm about to talk about, okay? Um... And somebody said, now what? So let me explain this to everybody. Um, let me explain this for people who may not know me, okay? I, I like to have what's called teachable moments. Shout out to Tony in the house. Um, I like to have teachable moments. So somebody said, now what? Actually, I am going to drop the bomb on y'all for this live is over. So please don't leave. I'm about to tell y'all some stuff that you need to know about the Breonna Taylor case and the cover up and the evidence that's about to be put out about it. Right. That everybody is is is, is hiding. But this is not what we're talking about just yet. Right. Um, but I use this as a teachable moment. So I'm not really as upset as people might think I am about the comments in the comment section. But Right. As a person who has a, a degree in psychology and not saying it in a way like Ooh, I'm smart, like psychology was was not really even about a job. It's a very interesting topic. Right. A lot of you should understand the psychology of people. So when I'm watching people do things, I am um, classes in session. I'm always studying people and the shit that they do. Right. Um a shout out to Tony to close it for buying a badge. Thank you. Um, a couple of them. Shoot. Thank you. Um, you know, and so class is always in session. And so I'm just watching and I just want to break down the mentality of people when I see this. So this is a teachable moment. OK, for people who have been around a long time, we're having a teachable moment right now. We're just going to talk about some people. Y'all be thinking y'all so smart. Y'all like dumb. OK, <laughs> you're too smart for your own good, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> so let's have a couple of conversations. OK. First of all, I wanted to go back and talk about um, real uh, Nick or uh, Nick. Kid, did I say that right? I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry if I fucked up your name. Thank you for the badge. Um, um, I want to talk about, so I did, a, a, I posted a post the other day and I showed all of these tags that I get from um, TSA, okay? And so people was like, it was a couple of people that came on there and they was like, um, girl, ain't nobody worried about you. Stop being paranoid. They was like, you know, um, Riza Islam and all of them have bigger channels than you and they doing more than you and they don't deal with that. So blah, blah, blah. So let me explain something to y'all. Okay. That everybody that sits in there like real little world and you don't dabble in this side of shit. And when I say this side of shit, like y'all think niggas being on the line out in the street, like they doing real work. Okay. Right. So, um, so understand this is what they doing, right? Somebody said so what she said. You said it's the uh, oh Nikki D. Okay, girl, I, I I just messed that shit all up. <laughs> but anyway, so y'all see that shit and y'all feel like people out here doing the real work. A lot of y'all don't live in this lane, okay? So let me explain something to all of you that live in your safe, comfortable life, okay? Um, first of all. There is a such thing as a black identity extremist, okay? Like, while all of y'all buy your Hennessy and get your Gucci belts and you rock into these new dumbass songs about wet-ass coochie and shit like that, there's a whole lot that's going on that y'all pay no attention to, right? So, well, what, two years back, there was a law put into act talking about black identity extremists, right? So, if you don't know that, you wouldn't know what a black identity extremist is. So, I definitely a black identity extremist okay a person who talks it's an it's it's a it's a, it's a, a terroristic term they want to put on pro-black people right so if you are pro-black if you have a audience if you have people that are listening to you if you are out here leading marches and protests in the streets right you are a problem okay and they're using that so that they can come down on black people before they get too far because we're in this day and age of social media which allows people to spread their message and things much further okay so let's let, let's let's go real slow in this so there were people in there who were saying you know your name is not on no list um don't worry about that okay so i just want to say to y'all yes the fuck it is i know this comes with the territory and it's okay so anybody that's been with me from day one, you know, the reason I show y'all these things is because they will kill a motherfucker and tell you it was suicide. I'm never killing myself. If they ever tell you that it's a motherfucking lie. OK, um, they will find a way to uh, take a nigga's character and diminish it. They will kill your ass at the end if they have to. They do a whole lot of things. They'll lock you up in jail. We know that this comes with the territory. OK, so for anybody who was like, yeah, I get these in my bag all the time. 
Okay, let me be clear. A lot of people use the word all the time. When I mean it, I really mean all the time. So let me clarify. So for anybody who was like, oh, I got three of them. Oh, I got a couple in the past year. For two years, two, two motherfucking years. I'm not talking about one trip or two trips. Since the black agenda started and we started traveling, these have been in my suitcase. Okay, so when I say all the time, I, I don't mean just this weekend and past week when I was traveling. Okay, I literally probably have collected 30 or 40 of those motherfuckers. Okay, now I travel with a whole team of people. Nobody else bag ever gets checked because of mine. Why would that be? That's because Michi has a platform and most of the people that I work with are out here doing the work, but their platform is not as big as mine. And they're not saying the things that I'm saying. Okay. So understand is that, and somebody made a good point I want to say in there. The reason why I bring this to y'all attention too, and I'm making it public, like I do every time, like when the police pretended there was a burglary in progress at my house to verify if I had just moved into Denver, because I used to drive to Denver when I was in Colorado every other event. I was always out there talking shit, right? Somebody said it's no sound, so that I think that's on your end. Everybody else seems to say they can hear me. Um, so when they came to my house, when there were black cars following me, how many of y'all remember the day that I hit y'all up and I said, oh, it was just somebody in front of my house. I'm sitting in the kitchen window at the sink washing dishes, and they out there taking pictures of me. When they realized I could see them, and I gave these motherfuckers, I gave these motherfuckers, um, you know, the middle finger, they was like, oh, shit, she's seen us. And then they drove the fuck off, right? So make these things public so that y'all know that I'm dealing with these things and I don't keep them to myself. I told y'all from the beginning, I'm going to be transparent in this journey and that's all I've ever done, right? So I want to say that these be in my bag all the time. So for anybody who says the RZA thing, oh, well, RZA has a bigger platform than you and other, and, and who do y'all say, Umar Johnson? This is true. This is true, right? This is true. But what are they talking about? See, RZA want to, and no, not the RZA. Like, other than the fact, like, nigga, you be, you be standing next to that janky-ass nigga Tariq Nasheed, and you don't acknowledge how he talks down on black kids and black people in the motherfucking community, right? This, 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 so, yeah, I question all of you niggas in the nation, because y'all love standing next to niggas who make y'all look good, but y'all never question their integrity. Like, I'm tired of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Fuck out of here. So, I don't have a problem with RZA, but you know what RZA want to do? RZA want to um, Kung Fu Panda a nigga. Tell me where I'm wrong. Somebody said, what is this notice? Okay, this is a bag inspection notice. So when you go through the airport, um, they go through your bag. They're supposed to randomly check people's bags. So you can get your bag randomly checked. If they go through your bag, they put this in your bag to let you know, look, notice of inspe baggage inspection. It means that they have checked your bag. So every time I go somewhere, there's always this on top of my bag. In my clothes, right? In my in my suitcase when I open it. Um, when I come back, there's one on top of my suitcase everywhere I go. I will never forget the time I was like, they always in my bag. I had like eight of them. So I sat them on top of the bag like, bitch, y'all always in my bag. <laughs> Do you know, right? Do you know that when I got to where I was going, they just added another one? Like, yeah, bitch, we see them eight. <laughs> but you're going ninth. They just they just gave me another one. Okay, this is what this is what they did. So so um th that's what this is, okay. Um, but again, again, uh, let me tell you this too. This is the scary thing is that one time they went through my bag and they did not put the tag in the bag. Okay. They didn't put the tag in the bag, but I knew they had gone through my bag cause my shit was flipped inside out. My toothbrush was sitting on my sneakers and I was like, God damn, I didn't put my shit like this. So I knew that they had been through my bag. Okay. But they didn't have a tag in there. So the scary part about it is you in my bag so much. And this is why I would like to make it public. Right. You're in my bag so much that when you do go in my bag and don't put a slip, are you going to put something in my bag? Because I don't know. What are you looking for? Like you've been checking my bag for two years. What you try? What, what you think you're going to find? You ain't found shit yet. So that's my concern. They always in my bag. And then you go in my bag one time and there's no slip. But I know you've been in there. So how the fuck I know you're not going to put some shit in my bag one day. Right. It could be that simple. It'd be my word against theirs. <laughs> but it was in her bag. We don't care what she say. We found this shit in her bag. Bitch, you going down. It could be that simple, right? So this is why I make this shit public. But back to RZA. RZA is telling you niggas not to get vaccinations. I completely agree with RZA. I think that his platform is great and it's big. But RZA wants you to Kung Fu Panda motherfuckers. 
Does he not? The Nation of Islam wants you to give a nigga a bean pie and while they eating it, sneak him from the back, hit the nigga, do a, a, a Kill Bill move on him or some shit. I don't know. But they do not promote violence and they do not promote guns and they do not promote revolution. Neither does uh, Umar Johnson. Okay? So I don't give a damn how big their platform is. If they're not dealing with this, maybe it's because they don't tell you shit like, fuck the police. If you are tired of the police killing you, why don't you kill them back? You do know that your consequences will be death or prison. But wait a minute. We out here dying every day for nothing. We will spend the rest of our lives in jail over killing another black person. Right? Or take the risk of their gang retaliating and murdering us. And we will die all day and murder all day for that. So you don't get to tell me we ain't got killers in the community. So why the fuck, why the fuck y'all scared to touch the police? Consequences are the same. But the outcome, oh, the outcome would be so different. See, they're not telling you shit like that. They're not on their platforms telling you if you want to win, like white supremacy is the government. So how do you fight white supremacy? Overthrow the country. You're not supposed to say shit like that. Do y'all understand this? For as much as this country is the land of the free and freedom of speech, that is not true. I don't have the right to say what I say. And there is a price that you pay. So if I was the government, I'd watch Michi too. Because even though my audience is not as big as theirs, the question is, will her audience become that big? And the bigger question is, are there going to be enough people that's going to listen to what she's saying that they actually going to do what this lady is saying. That's why you motherfuckers don't understand the side of this and how this shit works for those of you that are sitting on the other side. You think people are a bigger threat because they have a bigger platform. That's not how this works. Okay? So please understand that. So for anybody who was like, oh, are you being paranoid? Then there was a dumb motherfucker in the comment section. I just have to say this. If you on here, I just want you to know, I'm going to need you to stay out the public school system, okay? Because it did you no good, brother, whatsoever. <laughs> he says to me, ain't no government entity got your name on no list. The government don't care about you. Brother, I want you to all look really closely. Do you see this? Do you see that? Can you see what it says? In the circle. Yes? No? I don't got it on the American side. Look, here you go. Look. For any of you that couldn't see it, it says the United States Department of Homeland Security. Let me say that again. The United States Department of Homeland Security. Anything that is a threat to the security of the government is their responsibility. So for any of you niggas who think I'm saying that Biden put that order in or Biden put my name on the list, do you fucking understand that there are different levels of government? And TSA is Homeland Security, dummy. So if my name is on a fucking list, even if it's just with TSA, um, that is a government entity. Okay? Okay? I'm, I'm going to need you to go. And ask your school why they did you like that. I'm going to need y'all to stay out these public schools. Okay, sir? Because they did you no justice. And whatever the fuck they taught you. Because this is a government entity right the fuck here. Do you not know that the government consists of plenty of departments? Okay? So, that's that about you so smart, you dumb motherfuckers with that topic. Teachable moment. So, I just wanted to tell everybody that, okay? And if you're going to be around Michi, I share the things that happen to me all of the time. Because if anything ever... Happens to me, I want y'all to know the truth. And don't ever let anybody be like, Michi would have wanted y'all to stop. Michi would want y'all to have peace. No, Michi would want you to burn this motherfucker down. This is why they check my bag. Now you go find somebody else like Riza and them who tell you that shit. And then you can tell me that I must be lying because they ain't getting that shit. That's because they're not talking that shit. Okay? Let's be clear. That's not they lying. All right? So, next thing I want to talk about is how disrespectful you stupid motherfuckers are to Tamir Rice's mother. Okay? I'm so tired of, um, every time she says something, it's always some of y'all that come forward and want to talk down on this woman. Um, and I'm sick of it. I really the fuck it. If anybody has, um, been around me from the beginning, you will know that Tamir's case is, um, was a catalyst for me. 
His case was the last one, right? When that happened to him, it did something to me. In spite of the other situations that I've had in my own life, because this fight is very personal for me. You know, we all was upset over Sandra Bland, but I know what it's like for the police to kill your family member and then tell you they committed suicide and they didn't. I've lived it. They did it to my brother, right? Um, I talk about the school to prison pipeline, but my son has actually been taken from me and put into the school to prison pipeline, okay? So I've watched it in real life unfold. So I have my personal things, but when it comes to the outside situations, Tamir was the last one for me. I never understood why we did not burn this country down then. I, d I didn't understand that. But then I guess I should because we didn't give a fuck with Latasha Harlan either, right? Like the riots happened after all of that and when they burnt down. So people got killed. Like that was, to me, y'all can say what y'all want. Like that was the best, the best riot ever. The Rodney King riots. Motherfuckers. If you was the wrong color and you was at the wrong cross section, you was dying that day. You was getting your ass beat. That, it looked like the beginning of a revolution to me. But see, it stopped right there. In L.A., it didn't go any further, right? If we had got upset everywhere and done that, we might be in a different place this day and age. We really might, right? But we did not. We did not. But to watch that officer roll up on Tamir, he's 12. Does, do any of you have a 12-year-old? I just, what, can y'all take a moment and, and think about that 12-year-old? Is there a 12-year-old next to you, an 11-year-old, 13-year-old, anybody in that age bracket? You have a nephew, you have a niece, do you have a child that age? Are they around you? Just take a moment and look at them. Think about them. And then put that child that you love so much in Tamir's shoes. Do that for me. He was a baby. He was 12 years old. He was at a park playing with a toy gun. When I watch motherfucking white kids at 12 have real guns. But he got a toy gun. He's at an empty park. I think empty should be specified. It was an empty park. Who was in danger if it was a real gun? Hmm? Who? The officer rolls up to the scene. He shoots the boy when he gets there in a matter of seconds. Seconds. No bullhorn, no put your hands up. The person on the phone said they thought that it might have been a toy gun. None of that shit. You just killed a baby. He rolls up to the scene. He rolls out the car like this nigga is on coke. Like something wrong with him. Like he think he in a motherfucking movie. And shoots this baby. Then when you find out it's a toy gun. And he's a baby. You let him die on the ground. All by himself. You take his 14 year old sister. And put her in the police car. As though she's committed a crime. You don't let her stay by the side of her brother. She's in the car while her brother is dying. He's 12. And he's on the fucking ground dying by himself. If that wasn't enough for you motherfuckers, I'm here to tell you, TSA ain't got to worry about Michi. Because you niggas didn't get up and we didn't give a fuck to do something about it then, we not gonna never do nothing. You, you thought niggas was gonna turn this motherfucker upside down for George Floyd? <laughs> why? We didn't do it for a baby. So why the fuck would we do it for a grown ass man? And this cop can still be a cop. I'm not understanding why he's still alive. See, I'm not supposed to talk like that. Why he's still alive? Because a pookie fuck with your family member, your gang member. And you got pookie address. You shooting up Pookie Crib. Babies, everybody in that motherfucker. Grandma, Pookie ain't even in the bitch and you done killed the whole family, nigga. But this cop get to live? I hate some of you motherfuckers. And then you get your ass on here. You get your ass on here. And when Tamir Rice's mother puts up a statement against Sean King, 
Claiming this motherfucker collected money. Without her permission. Something she didn't ask this nigga to do. Money that she did not receive. Y'all got a problem with that. Let me explain something to y'all. I always question these motherfuckers. That don't have a why. What is Sean King's why? I don't watch the light bright nigga. So could somebody tell me? What is Tamika's why? Hmm? What is my son's why? This nigga got three lips, but I don't think white supremacy had anything to do with that. What is his why? See, I'm really tired of the people who haven't gone through any of this. Right? They ain't got no dog in this fight. You ain't lost shit. You ain't been through nothing. You ain't tasted the, the fullness of oppression in this bitch. Your babies ain't dead. Your family ain't dead. Nigga, you didn't get beat down by the motherfucking police. You ain't served the unjust sentence. None of that. None of that. But yet and still, y'all got the biggest names out this motherfucker. And you claim you out here fighting for the community. See, the reason why I question your why is because I'm not saying that people can't be like this enough and just out of my black pain. I'm tired of seeing it. And I want to get up and I want to help my people. I'm not saying you can't do that. What I am saying to you is this. See, I seen a whole lot y'all niggas ain't seen. I've dealt with a whole lot that y'all ain't, ain't been through and you don't know how these people is behind the scene. See, it's a whole lot of money off black pain. It's a whole lot of money to be made. Do y'all know this? Hmm? And this is what happens to 99.999% of all the niggas in this fight. If you don't have a why, see your why keeps you grounded. Because without a why, you see the money. And you didn't realize that this thing could pay you the way that it does. Sean King, Ben Crump, Tamika Mallory, Dr. Watkins, Vicki Dillard. You ain't know that, huh? So when you don't have a why, you sell your people out. Because the money begins to look good. A nigga can hand you a check for you to shut the fuck up and you'll be quiet. Somebody can give you a Cadillac endorsement, Tamika Mallory, and you can shut the fuck up, right? A company, you're married to, Lee Merritt, a company that has racist practices. They got nooses all in their goddamn plants out in Michigan and other places and monkeys hanging from fucking people's offices being racist as hell. This was all in the news. But you just took your black ass up there and hopped out a Cadillac, bitch. And made it seem like it was black empowerment to drive a Cadillac. So now we're pushing people to go support openly in the news, being sued, racist ass companies so you can get a check and you don't have a dog in the fight? Yeah, bitch, I'm going to need you to have a why. See, my why is my brother. My why is my son. Tamir Rice's mother, her why is Tamir Rice. And let me tell you what that why does for us. That why don't allow me to see the money. Because if I took this check, bitch... If I shut up for an endorsement, motherfucker, if I led my people the wrong way, I would be selling out my brother. I would be selling out my son. It ain't even about selling you niggas out. It would be about selling out mine. Because I have a why. I have a why I do this. I have a why I'll go to fuck to jail for the rest of my life. I got a why. If these niggas come for me, they just gonna have to come for me. I got a why. We all should have something to live for. And the same thing I live for, motherfucker, I'll die for it. You can never cut me a check. You can never apologize. You can never give me anything to bring back everything you've taken from me. I wish the fuck I would betray my why for a dollar. 
Fuck your dollar. See, I always question these niggas with no whys. Your why keep you grounded. It allow you not to see the money. So, for those of y'all that came in this chat, let me say something to you too. In the comment section, and y'all said um, there's two sides to every story. It doesn't matter what we show y'all. Some of y'all just going to keep caping for these people. It was a motherfucker in the chat. You said. There's two sides to every story and that you're not going to believe Sean King is a fraud because he has taught you a lot. What? What? Like that's one of them what's you said the wrong thing in front of your mama and she look at you and be like, what? What? What did you just say to me? What? You do not know this man in real life whatsoever. Y'all gonna stop caping for motherfuckers you ain't never met. I tell you this about me all the time. A lot of y'all know me personally. I have done things for some of y'all. We have actually met. Like, I, I, I fuck with the people who fuck with me. I'm starting not to do that as much because a lot of y'all y'all users too and y'all come into a motherfucking life and I be trying to be nice. I got to cut myself off to, to, to the audience and, and the public because y'all niggas is grimy. And y'all want to be in somebody's face and then as soon as a motherfucker don't do what you want to do or they're not your best friend like you want them to, I don't answer my phone. I don't call my brothers and sisters. But as soon as I don't call you, then it's a problem. So I stay away from that shit, right? But if all y'all do is watch me online and I've taught you something, you don't really know me, okay? So speak on only what you know. Don't lie for me. I may have taught you a lot, but if I was a piece of shit and people have, have, have evidence that I'm a piece of shit, you should not defend me when you don't fucking know me. Now, if you know me and I've done something for you and you dealt with Michi, you can say, well, you know, I, I, well, my experience with Michi, you ain't never met this motherfucker a day in your life. You watch him online. He's taught you something? Okay. The teacher in the classroom taught kids plenty. Doesn't null and void the fact that this bitch was fucking a 12-year-old student. How about that? That's your logic? You know, the Catholic priest taught your ass a lot too. After he take them boys in the back and he molest them all. But he taught you a lot. This woman has actually dealt with this man it is her son and she is saying this motherfucker collected money without her permission money she didn't receive how dare you not give her the benefit of the fucking doubt she done called this nigga out publicly See, y'all better beware of these niggas that go and motherfucking hide when somebody is, is, is saying some shit like that you can't even tag Sean King and nothing. He don't even want the tags no more. Don't even say nothing to me. This is Tamir Rice's mother, a case that a lot of you motherfuckers have built your names off of. And if we're not going to respect and hear the voice of those that have actually paid the price, then what the fuck are we doing? If you're going to come and defend what he said, then I just need you. It's two sides to every story. Yeah, it is. Right? His bank account and his organization's bank account. Them the two sides. This lady has said something publicly. And instead of asking her if this is the truth and allowing her to say what she got to say, y'all find some way to not make it true because you niggas suffer from cognitive dissonance. And you just can't believe this man that you don't believe in, that you fighting for, that you love, that you don't fucking know. You rather believe that she lying. Y'all disrespectful as fuck to Tamir's mother. I remember when she came out and said that all of these people was capitalizing and she called Tamika Mallory out. Right? She called Tamika Mallory out at the award show, said the bitch is full of shit. Y'all said that she was cloud chasing. Yes, Michael Brown's father called out BLM. Y'all said she was cloud chasing. I wish the motherfuckers who said that would say that in my face. I really wish y'all would. Y'all called Tamir Rice's mother a clout chaser by speaking up. We are truly lost. And this is why we're not going to get nowhere. Th this backwards ass thinking. What does she need to clout chase for? I know her son was murdered and that's what she wanted some clout. 
Yeah. I'm not understanding how Tamir Rice's foundation, right? Because y'all keep talking about the people on the front line doing the work. We finna talk about the front line. We finna talk about this fraud and the Breonna Taylor case and, a, and, and, and some evidence. I'm finna put the fuck up here in a minute that's finna show you they covered up all the evidence. And these black ass motherfuckers had a part to play in it. How about that? But Tamir Rice's foundation, why doesn't she have millions of followers? You know, she actually has an organization for her child. And while her organization can't get to where it needs to be, while she can't get the stuff she needed, ain't nobody donate millions to her. Ain't nobody even following that foundation page to the extent you follow these other motherfuckers. But wait a minute, she paid the price. But these other motherfuckers can post things, hashtag names, representing the name of, these, of this baby and everybody else around here that's being murdered when they don't have a dog in the fight. But the woman who actually paid the price and took her pain to try and do something. You know, Tamir Rice's mother activist too. The fuck? You niggas don't know that? It's a problem if you don't know that. Y'all don't support her like you support the people who ain't lost nothing. And then y'all talk about this woman like this. For anybody who feel that way, don't you dare hashtag that boy's name. Don't even speak to Mir's name. You're a fucking disgrace. And this is how you treat her. We don't need uh, white people or oppression to fuck black people over. Because we do that real well by our damn selves. Okay? Now let me drop this bomb on y'all so I can get the hell out of here. Right. Share this video because people need to know this. So I will be posting something for you. Remember, I told y'all and shout out to everybody that's put the badges. Forgive me if I if you know me when I get to going in. The last thing I'm looking at is the comment section. I don't want to lose my train of thought. Right. So remember what I told y'all to remember a name, Kendrick. Right. So there is a man named Kendrick. Kendrick worked on the Breonna Taylor case. Right. He is a black man that lives in Louisville, Kentucky. He was there long before, uh, uh, you know, Tamika Mallory and all these motherfuckers brought their asses in to deflect and send something in another direction. Right. Um, and he was leading the marches and the protests out there and he was getting all these people to come out. And so he started working with the attorneys. They called him up and they was like, look, because Brett Hankerson, the officer, if y'all don't know who that is, you know, that was being charged with wanton murder, the only one in Breonna Taylor's case. Um, he actually is a dirty cop. And this guy, Kendrick, actually had a case against this man as well for harassing him and tearing up his businesses in his house just because he was, you know, sleeping. I told y'all, black men can't be out here messing with white girls and, and you know, people's motherfucking in certain, these certain cities. The KKK out there, y'all better stop playing in Louisville, right? They still fuck niggas over for touching their white girls. I'm just telling y'all, right? So this was the cop's ex-girlfriend and they ain't been harassing him ever since. But this man, Brett Hankerson, he had charges of sexually assaulting women, like making him give him oral sex to let them out of a traffic ticket. Like, how come all this stuff is not coming forward about this officer, right? So he lives there. He knows that this shit is going the fuck on. Okay? Yes, everybody says he's crazy, but this is the thing. Let me say this about Kendrick. Kendrick is angry because nobody's hearing him. And when you give him an opportunity to speak, I'm going to tell you psychologically what's happening. When you give him an opportunity to speak, he's trying to give you everything. And so it's all over the place. All of his emotions are there with it. He's angry. He seems a bit nobody wants, you know. And so it comes out a certain way where people are like, I don't know what's going on here. We're going to slow down and break this shit down because all of the stuff that he could tell you with evidence, right? We just need to slow it down so you can connect the dots. So everybody keeps saying he's crazy. Well, I want y'all to tell me how crazy he is because I'm getting ready to post a video after I get off of here. Right. And it is a recording between him. It's a phone call and the attorney who is the attorney on the case for Brianna Taylor. OK. OK. In this video, you are going to hear him ask the attorney. Why? Did y'all take $12 million to destroy the evidence we worked to find? I'm going to need y'all to slow down and take this in deep breaths because this is what's on this call. Okay? The attorney does not deny that that's the case. So did we get a $12 million settlement to destroy the evidence that would have actually convicted motherfuckers? Really? Was that what that settlement was about? Because according to this phone call, it is. The attorney doesn't say, well, Kendrick, that's not true. He says, I know, I know. You're going to hear the attorney on this phone call. It's like seven minutes. So please take the time to listen to it, right? 
But the, he says, I know, I know you're upset, Kendrick, you know, blah, 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 blah. He's like, but if I do this and I do that, he admits at one point, he's like, all the evidence that you have, these niggas should be under the jail. They should all be in jail for murder. And it's one for want, wanton murder. So the, the attorney says, well, you're right. He said, well, I don't know all 20. He said, but at least 10 of them could have been charged with murder. This is what the attorney says based on the evidence that they had. And then Kendrick says, well, you about nine short and you a charge short because this nigga not being charged with murder. He says, Kendrick, I know. What do you want me to do? I mean, I know. So the attorney's not denying it. So you're getting ready to hear an attorney that is the head attorney on this case admit that there was evidence that proved at least 10 of those officers were guilty of murder. All of that evidence was squandered. And listening to the phone call, it sounds like to me that the $12 million settlement was agreed upon that the evidence that was there would be destroyed. But you got motherfuckers out here like Tamika Mallory, who was so involved in the situation and everybody else steady screaming justice for Breonna Taylor. Now, let me say this. These things are allegedly I don't know, but I know what I heard in the tape. I'm going to let you listen to the record and you tell me what you hear. I'm just stating what I heard. That's it. But y'all out here screaming justice for Breonna Taylor, but you know that justice is never coming because y'all destroyed the fucking evidence. Really? This is what we doing? But you're going to still milk the fuck out of that girl's name, ain't you? When you know ain't no justice coming. Hmm. So there was evidence. This is what the attorney says. He says this out of his own mouth. Convict to probably put, you know, charge about 10 of them with murder. But you got one on charges of wanton murder. And the one that's on wanton murder, right, is the one who actually has a gang of charges against him. He has been fucking with people in Louisville for forever. And all of these things are public knowledge. They all know that this motherfucker Brett is fucking with everybody. But they cover all of this nigga's crimes and everything that he does. So y'all listen to the tape and y'all be the judge of it. I'm just going to put the evidence out there. I'm going to play it. I'm going to put it right here. Please share it with everybody. I'm not understanding. He put it on his YouTube page. I'm not understanding. I told him he put the wrong title in it. And so let, let's talk about something too. There is also a video that I don't know if you guys, if you guys have watched Kendrick, there's a video where... I don't know if it's Kendrick or somebody's out there and they're talking to um, Roland Martin and then they're talking to attorney Crump, right? So Crump is there and he's walking and he's asking Crump, this is all on video, he's asking Crump, um, have you ever heard of Kendrick, right? And he says, no, Kendrick who? And he says, um, no, no, he says, you haven't heard of Kendrick, which is weird because Kendrick is working on the case. He was paid to work with the attorneys on the Breonna Taylor case. He's the one that helped bring all of this evidence about and, and, and brought these things to everybody, right? So he is a part of the case. How are you working on a case and you don't know all of the players that are on the case, Crump? And then Crump admits on this video, no, 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 you know, I don't, I'm not taking the lead on that anymore. I'm not the lead attorney, so I don't know what's going on. So Crump admits he doesn't even know what the fuck is going on in the case. Now, follow me with this. I'm just going by what the man said. It's on video, right? I want y'all to pay attention to this. Every time somebody dies, who faces up there talking? Crump and Lee Mary? Yes. They are black facing everybody. That's what that means. So why are we looking at Crump and why are we patting these attorneys on the back? Which I don't pat these niggas on the back because they just ambulance chasers if you ask me. But you're not even on the case, nigga. You don't even know what's going on on the case. You don't know who the players are. You don't know anything. So why are you at the fucking podium always giving the mic? Because maybe it don't look right if the Mexican man who's actually running the case comes forward. So y'all black facing us? See, this is what organizations do. If y'all watched me for a while, some of my day ones that's in here, y'all know we've talked about how people co-op a movement and there's several ways to do it. A lot of times in these organizations, what they have is, 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 is black faces, but behind the scenes, money and all the strings being pulled and shit are really white people. But they just put a black face on it by actually not wearing black face. They just get a black person 
to say present this to the people so they will follow you because they see your black face because they ain't gonna run with us so they use black faces to get you to to come in their direction right so this is what's really going on so crump admitted that he's not on the case so why the fuck are we praising him and why the fuck is his name always everybody mouth and why is he always the one at the podium speaking when this nigga doesn't even know what's going on in the case out of his own mouth i'm not the lead in that i don't even know what's going on this is what crump said out of his own mouth no i'm not the lead on that and he names one person he says i know of her you really ain't down with the case, nigga, if you don't know about the person who is working the case and who is working with all of the evidence and brought everything forward. How do you not know his name? Or do you just not want to know his name? Crump? Hmm? So I, I want y'all to realize that that's being exposed too. They put these black motherfuckers in front of the podium. They're not even the ones really fighting these cases. And I understand legalities and having a team of people who come together and they're all working together to fight a case. Like, I get that. Right? But this man doesn't know what's going on at all. He's not even a part of the case. You're just the face. Why are you the face, Crump? You are allowing motherfuckers to use the fuck out of you. And you willingly do it so you can be paid for it. And y'all got him standing up here like he the one running this case. And he's not. Out of his own mouth, he's not. So... Again, y'all can miss me with this bullshit of trying to defend these people out here that are not doing the real work. Like, I'm not, I'm not understanding. I'm really not understanding how somebody can march in the streets. You also going to find out and you're going to, you're going to see over time, all of this evidence that Kendrick has to bring forward is that, and this is true because I, you know, out of all the people Kendrick has tried, tried to tell this story to, I said, well, the, the man, what the man is implying is true. I want to see what he's talking about. Right? So the things I'm speaking on are the things I have seen for myself and I'm going to show you, right? But know that there is plenty of stuff to show that Tamika Mallory, there were plenty of marches going on in Louisville before they ever came out there. There's footage of Kendrick in front of all of them leading thousands of people. They gave him the job to work on the team so that they could keep him from protesting. And they said they were going to place Tamika in them in there instead. So basically all the momentum that this man made up, the attorney called that bitch and asked her to bring her ass the fuck down to Louisville. Y'all always think that Tamika and, and, and my son is out here ca causing all of this, all of these marches and protests. No, nigga. They get there and people are already marching and protesting. You didn't start this shit. You didn't lead this shit. You didn't organize this shit, bitch. You just got the fuck in front of it so that you could be a black face just like Crump. So they could use you to fucking control the narrative. So we got questions for you, Tamika. When all this shit start coming out, we gonna need you to give us some answers. Just like Crump. Crump ain't really doing no work. He said that himself. But yours is the first fucking face we see so that we'll go along with this bullshit. Like Kwame said, go along, get along, gang. Y'all ain't know that shit. He's talking about people out here in the streets when it comes to, you know, sports and people on TV. Trust me, to go along, get along, gang, everywhere. They all in the black community, too. They all in the activism lane, too. Y'all go along to get along, ass niggas. Crump is just the face of something. And bitch, you're just the face of something. You didn't orchestrate none of that shit. They just called you and asked your ass to come out there. This is what she do everywhere she go. And somebody said receipts. I don't have to post receipts for the fact that uh, that um that Tamika does this. Every time you see a protest, we all see a protest. And then she shows up after the fact. She doesn't start the protest. Open your eyes, nigga. That's your fucking receipt. Show me one time that Tamika has gone somewhere and orchestrated a fucking protest with some shit go down. It's usually already riots going on on the ground, nigga. And then she just shows up to where the place is. You, you open your eyeballs. There go those receipts. The fuck? Anybody tell me that you can't see that with your own eyes. The protest, Louisville was already out there protesting and fighting before Tamika ever showed the fuck up. I want to say the, the NFAC went out there with their guns before Tamika ever fucking showed up. It was a lot of shit on the ground going on before she got there. But somehow when she got there, because the people give her the mic and put her in front of everybody, y'all give her all the credit when this bitch wasn't there when the shit started. Open your eyeballs and you can see that part, my nigga. I don't need to bring receipts for that. Show me one protest she started. That's the key word here, started. See, we the people start them. This bitch always comes through and finishes it like it's her. But as far as this conversation with this attorney, I'm about to post that. So please listen to it and share it with everybody. Because this is evidence that shows 
out of the mouth of the attorney that there was evidence that was taken away. It was not shown. And that evidence could have proved that at least 10 of those cops could have been charged with murder. This is what comes out of the attorney's mouth. So I don't know. Y'all listen to it and you tell me what the fuck you see. Now, I didn't say that Tamika was a part of that. I don't know. But the bottom line is she was working with this attorney. That's why he had her and Crump at the podium all the time. So my question would be, bitch, when you working with him, you didn't know all of these things? Were you a part of that? You sit around and took credit like you helped the mother get the $12 settlement, like you were there in the midst of the signing. You act like you were there the whole, the whole way long, bitch. So the question is, do you know these things? And if you do know these things, that's a problem. And if you don't know these things, that's a problem too. Because you keep telling people you are involved, just like Crump, that y'all at the table, y'all at these meetings, y'all behind the scenes, and y'all making shit happen. So if y'all doing that, then bitch, you should know all of this stuff. Sorry, y'all. Y'all can hear me. I had a call coming in. So if, if you're at the table, you should know all this stuff that Kendrick is already saying. And if you don't know that, then that's a problem because that means you're just the face too. And that means you're not as involved in these cases as you say you are. So either way it go, that's problematic. So I'm just saying, y'all think about that for a moment. If you are a part of this case, to the extent you say you are, why don't you know these things, Tamika? And if you don't know these things, then that means you're not a part of these cases like you say you are. So you're just a face too. And that's a problem, Tamika. So which one is it? But y'all keep on praising these motherfuckers that don't have a why in the fight. Y'all go ahead. Then y'all don't come ask me why the fuck we ain't free. Y'all keep praising these motherfuckers that don't have a why. Kendrick is in the chat, you guys, where it says... um. Drix World, you guys can go over there and follow his um, YouTube channel is um, King Kendrick. I'm going to post it, um, the, the recording that I listen to after I get off of here. I got a, that phone call that came in. That's cute. I got to call him back tonight. Somebody asked earlier, we have the um, the school the school panel where we're going to do all the stuff. So it will be live, you guys. We're going to try and connect it to all of our YouTube channels. So you'll probably be able to watch it on mine. But if not, go over to Zyax's channel or Q, or Q Butter's channel on YouTube. Um, but we're going to be broadcasting from everywhere. So if you are subscribed to me here on Instagram, on my YouTube, if you are following Zyax Institute, if you are following Q on any of those platforms, you're going to see it. So, um, But I will let you guys know for sure. I'll post it um, before it all starts. It's not till later on tonight um, for you guys to come over about the homeschooling event. Um, um, and then later on this week, I'm going to let y'all listen to it. I'm going to let it marinate a little bit in your system and deal with what you're about to hear. Um, and then Kendrick is going to come on. Me and Kendrick are going to have a conversation and we're going to slow things down. Um, I understand Kendrick and I just want Kendrick to slow stuff down. So we're going to speak on what you're going to hear in this phone call and we're going to speak on that and that only. As he begins to show you other evidence, we will speak on that evidence as we get to it. But right now, we're just going to talk about what you guys are going to hear in this call. So when I get off of here, I'm going to post it up here. Yes, somebody asked if they could post this video. Um, please share this video. I think people need to know this shit. Um, and when I post that, please, I want y'all to share that with everybody because this is damning information that they never gave any of us. Basically, y'all destroyed the evidence and y'all covered up the Rihanna Taylor murder. The murder. And y'all let a lot of cops go free. That's crazy. I think the people should know that. And I think more importantly, we should all know who are the players in this. Who are the players? All you motherfuckers standing around with these people claiming black power. This is not black power. So I want to know who the fuck is responsible for this. I want all you niggas names. All y'all, y'all got some, y'all got some questions to answer for us. So... I'm going to get out of here and go call Q back before he call my phone again and mess up the live again. Thank you for everybody who gave a badge. Forgive me that I wasn't shouting you out, but again, I'm just in my zone. I don't want you to lose my train of thought. Um, for all of y'all that's so smart, y'all dumb, like, fuck you. I don't know what else to tell you. Kiss my ass. Don't come over here with that dumb shit no more. That's my pet peeve. I don't do stupid people that don't think.